What's up guys? Eli here. I got a video for you. Um, it's going to be a collection update by the way. Um, despite my try not to buy shit lately, I I, I mean I think I've, I've accrued this stuff over the last uh, three or four weeks. But uh, it's kind of a lot I guess. I mean it's uh, not like I spent a ton of money. But uh, yeah, it's a decent amount of stuff to show. Um, in case you're wondering, we're listening to the uh, most recent and final uh, Asheron album um, titled Cult de Haas. Uh, I think it came out in 2016. I think it was 2016, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, criminally underrated. Uh, I heard almost no one talking about this, and it's really, really fucking good. Um, fantastic. I, I definitely recommend it. Um, it might be their best album, actually, so uh, they went out with a big fucking bang. Um, so, yeah, enough of that. Um, we'll get on with the stuff that I said I was going to show. Um, it's quite a mix, too. I got some, some DVDs, a uh, good stack of CDs, uh, I, got a, I got a cassette, and two vinyl records, so, yeah, it's a nice mix. Um, start. I've been want, uh, wanting to get this for a while. I have most of this band's releases, at least the last few, um, and I really like this band. I am, uh, um, I, I, got, I wouldn't say friends, but I'm fa <laughs> I've been Facebook friends with uh, one of these guys for quite a while now. Um, Newest album, uh, first full length from Thy Feeble Savior um, and Darkness Fell. This is uh, Hell's Headbangers release. I think it's only on cassette so far. I know CD and I think vinyl um, plans are in the works. But uh, I, I don't know. I might get one of those. But uh, I, I wanted the cassette anyways because everything I have from Amazon cassette. We got a, uh, got a black cassette as you can see. I'll show you the J card real quick. There's the artwork up a little, up pretty close. This design here was designed by Paul Ledney of Pro Fanatica, who, uh, Francisco, this guy has been friends with for quite a long time. Um, and, you know, it's fitting. This is pretty much, I don't want to insult anyone, but at least to my ears, um, it's, you know, it's Pro Fanatica worship. I think it's safe to say that's a thing going on. Um, yeah, it's killer. Uh, if you like Pro Fanatica, you can't fucking go wrong. Next, uh, I know I have this on CD already that I showed, I don't know, a while back, but uh, picked, it was fairly cheap, so I said, why the fuck not? I picked up uh, the newest Exhumed album, Death Revenge, the Relapse Records. We all know Exhumed, you know, um, old, uh, they've been around quite a long time now, Death Grind from the U.S. I'll pull this out real quick, the, uh, I won't show you the vinyl, it's just because it's just black, but the labels are kind of cool, Side Death, or I'm um, Side Revenge. This is side death. I'm not even showing it the right way, but whatever. Cool labels. Um, Relapse did a pretty good job with this. Um, it came with a, a massive poster of the cover, which is really cool because it's a really fucking cool cover. I haven't even listened to the album yet. I have it on two formats. What a fucking idiot. But anyways, yeah, massive poster. I don't know why I'm pulling it out because you've seen the cover, but whatever. I just, that's how big it is. It's quite large. It's about the size of like one of those flags or something. The back has song titles and lyrics and some cool pictures that go along with the storyline of the album. Yeah, definitely going to do something with that hopefully someday. <laughs> Though I've never ever done anything with any of my vinyl posters. The posters that come with records, I, I should say. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm going to do something with that. I'm going to frame it. Someday maybe. I never have. I do like that shit though. And next, I just picked this up like an hour ago actually. It was at one of my local shops and... One of my all-time favorite records. Um, I got this. I got into this one, um, you know, pretty young. I've had it on CD for fucking ever, and we all have heard this. We all own this, but uh, it's cool to have it on vinyl. Fucking Holy Diver, man. Hell yeah. First two Dio albums are, are definitely albums that are dear to my heart and always will be. This is a 2016, I think it said. Uh, Warner Brothers repress. They did a pretty good job. Um, comes with this, this inner sleeve, and uh, yeah pretty cool um and the vinyl itself is red clear clear red so shit dropping things but uh there you have it yeah side two yeah very cool um yeah one of my all-time favorite records and i saw it on vinyl and i was like fuck man i gotta get that shit it wasn't super expensive or anything and i could not say no to that pretty excited to see it anyways um move on to cds now um, some of these are just total random fucking shits that I bought. Uh, some of these bands I have never heard. 
Um, this one I remember hearing years back when this came out, like in 2010 or something. Don't remember it super well, but uh, picked it up because I remember liking it, I think. War Command, Warlord Supremacy. This is, uh, I mean, you can probably guess what it sounds like, judging by that logo. This is a uh, Canadian Black Death War Metal. Yeah, Revenge, Blasphemy, think of stuff like that. And there you have it. I do not remember. Um, I remember some of these dudes, I think, in this band were, some, were from some other like Canadian projects that I liked in the past. I don't remember for sure, um, but I think so. So go look them up. You might like it too, if you're into that kind of shit. This one was a total fucking random, uh, total random buy. Uh, I had never, ever heard of this band before, but uh, it, uh, it looked like some Dark Throne worship to me, so I grabbed it. It was pretty cheap. Hymen of Darkness. I mean, tell me that doesn't look like a Dark Throne album. Um, Unholy Total Hate. Fuck you all. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. There we go. Hymen of, uh, Hymen of Darkness are a black metal band from Mexico. And that's all I know about them. Next, uh, I remember years ago hearing a, an album from this band that I really liked. This is not the album, but uh, I figured, hey, I'll pick it up because why not? Um, that is uh, the Monolith Death Cult. The album is Blood uh, Blood Blood Cults. Uh, Season of Mist Records, limited CD, I guess. Six hundred and two out of a thousand. Boom. Um, Monolith Death Cult. They play like a kind of a industrial type death metal, I guess you could say. I don't remember where these guys are from. Um, uh, I wanted to say the Netherlands, but I, I don't remember for sure. Um, so yeah, never heard this album, but. Uh, We'll see. We'll see if it's any good. Um, I like some of their stuff, and some of their stuff I've heard I thought was kind of so-so, but we'll see. Next up, here's an album that I absolutely fucking love. Um, I really needed this in my collection, as it is one of my all-time favorite albums. I know that's a weird thing to say, but uh, I hadn't had it in physical format previously. So I ordered this uh, from Hell's Headbangers. It's a Hammerheart uh, re-release, but anyways, uh, Mystifier... Yeah, the world is so good that he who made it doesn't live there. Did I say that right? I never do. That The world is so good that who made it doesn't live here. I, I never have said it correctly. Anyways, uh, Hammerheart, uh, Repress, uh, one of my all-time favorite albums once again. This album is so fucking awesome. Um, if, if you've heard Mystifier, uh, even if you have heard Mystifier and haven't heard this album, um, you might not know what it sounds like, because this one sounds... All their albums actually have an individual sound. None of them sound completely alike. But this one is very unique. It's a unique Mystifier album, and it's unique just in the realm of metal. Um, Mystifier, you know, old school black metal from uh, from Brazil. Um, what really grabbed me about this one when I got into it years ago was was the fact that um, it's you know it's it's raw, occult black metal with you know with lots of really well done keyboards, uh, evil blasphemous sound and what's what stands out about it the most to me and really everyone that's ever heard it was would be the vocals man it's um this dude's of course got a great uh, a great black metal rasp but not only not only that but he he uh he throws out some really really wild operatic uh vocals just uh out of nowhere that really add a fucking cool touch that i don't i don't know if i've ever heard anyone do that before before or after this to be honest if anyone's ever heard anything like it uh, let me know, I'll check it out, because maybe someone else could do it pretty well too, but um, I don't know, it's, it's an original album, um, so good. One thing that bothers me about this release though, I have no fucking idea why Hammerheart did that. Um, it's the CD by the way, I don't know why they did this, but let me show you. Alright, see this guy right here? That guy? This guy, his name is Leandro played in Mystifier for a couple years. He was not in Mystifier when this album came out. He wasn't even in, like, he wasn't in the band for like over a decade after this album came out. Like I said, he was only, he did a real, he did a great job in Mystifier, but he was only in the band for like a couple years. He, he actually doesn't play on any of their albums. Why they, why they put him, I mean, nothing against him. Uh, he's, yeah, like I said, he did a great job, but uh, from what I've seen live videos and stuff, but he was not, he did not play on this album, so I don't get that. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that. Do you have that Hammerheart re-release, and did you notice that? Fucking stupid. 
really fucking stupid. It's just senseless. Once again, nothing against Leandro. I mean, it's not his fault. Um, anyways, here's another one. And this was a pretty cool surprise for, for various reasons. Um, I don't have a lot of I Hate God albums. Uh, I've only had one, and I've only heard like two, but I really like it. Um, I have Dope Sick, and I've always found that to be just a fucking terrifying, disgusting album. Um, I've had it for many, many years, and I found this randomly the other day at one of my local shops, uh, preaching the end time message. Um, yeah, it's picked it up randomly. I didn't even know where it sat in their discography. Apparently, apparently it's like a compilation of shit they've done from like splits and demos or something like that. Unre uh, some unreleased recordings, maybe. Um, not positive on that, but it is a compilation. And what really shocked me is that, uh, whoever sold this album, because I bought it used, so whoever sold this, um, this was signed. It was signed by the entire band, which is really cool. Check that out. Yeah, signed by the entire band. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I would have never expected that. I think I've had that, that happened to me actually with a, um, Crisian release one time, too. Um, and I, was, I was actually going to show it. It was my Crisian DVD that I showed in my metal DVD collection. Um, I had taken the insert out and forgot to put it back in. I actually have it right here. I'm going to grab it. Not that many of you really care, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, once again, I bought this DVD at one of my local stores uh, used. That's what it looks like when you pull it up, uh, when you spread it out. And that's, yeah, signed by Alex and uh, Mo Moises. Is that his name? Yeah. Or, no, Max and Moises, the brothers, I think. Any, I think it's there's only two signatures. But anyway, two out of the three uh, Christian guys. So that's cool. Um, moving on to the actual shit that I was showing. Um, I haven't really given this much time yet, so I cannot talk really much about it. I can say a few words, maybe, but I don't I can't really do more than that. Um, this is the new Watain album. Uh, what's it called? Trident Wolf Eclipse. Um, now, I, I do like Watain. I've listened to them since, like, since the like second or third album. Um, I've always liked them. Uh, I, I don't give a shit about hype. I know, I know, like, with, in the, with metalheads, you know, hype sometimes tends to ruin a band for us, but uh, really it's all about the music, and, and that that's, should be what matters. And I've always liked Watain's music. I, you know, I got into them before, not much before, but just a little before the hype, at least as far as I can remember. And anyways, I was hoping for a return to form, at least of sorts, because their last album was a piece of shit. They had flawless discography before that, but that album was fucking... I tried and tried and tried to like it, and I could not. Um, over over years, uh, you know, I'd listen to it a couple times every year, and I just I don't like it. I could not get into it. And this one, I only really gave it a passive kind of background listen. I wasn't really paying attention. Um... I liked what I heard. It, it did sound like more or less kind of a return to form, um, which is, like I said, which is what I wanted, but I need to give it, I'll probably do it tonight, to give it a closer focused listen. Um, anyways, yeah, I thought it sounded pretty good, but I really need to listen to it more. This is, uh, this is what the CD version looks like when you open it up. Kind of, I'll try to show you all the, all the band members and shit. Um... Yeah, anyways, fucking good luck putting that back together. I never can do it. Um, some pretty cool artwork in here and stuff. I don't think it came with a booklet, which, unless I fucking lost that shit already. Um, this is that picture of the band right there. If you care enough to see it. Yeah, so anyways, need to listen to it. Um, what, was I, what else was I going to say? Yeah. Open for a return to, return to form, like I said. From what little I heard, that's pretty much what they were going for. Which is kind of what I predicted they would do. Because, I mean, I'm sure, you know, they, they fucking get on the internet. They know a lot of people didn't like that last album. And what do bands do when they put out a semi-experimental album that fails? They usually put out an album right after that that's a return to form. So, um, sometimes that is genuine, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just to try to get back on track, but... Whatever. Um, whatever. Next up, uh, I had heard this album before. Didn't really do a whole lot for me, but it is one of my favorite bands, and I always buy shit that they put out. Uh, I love this band. Have forever. Uh, Faith's Warning, Theories of Flight, um, via, what, fucking Inside Out Records. You know, the label that puts out every progressive metal band ever. Um, yeah, Digipack, like, fucking everything nowadays. 
Comes with a DVD. I don't even know what the fuck's on it. I never watch these things. Uh, I think it's like an acoustic version of the album or something. That doesn't really interest me much. But anyways, listen to it like twice. It's okay. It's okay. It's 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 modern fate's warning. Um, I mean, these guys have not put out an album that's really interested me for over a decade, maybe two decades. But uh, I do like a lot of the Ray Alder era stuff, and his voice um, still sounds great. He sounds in in uh, in top form on this, but it's just uh, the songs don't do a whole lot for me. It's not bad. It's just it, it doesn't do much for me. Um, I, also, here's another one. I really like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and I never had this album. Didn't even really know much about it, to be honest. This is just some one of those fucking re-releases. Um, pictures, uh, pictures at an Exhibition. I didn't know it was going to be a live album, uh, but what's cool about it is that it, uh, it's not just a live album. It's them playing live, but playing... Um, I don't want to... Like, reinterpretations of classical music um, done by, like, some obscure, at least, I've never heard of the dude, I think he's fairly obscure, uh, Russian um, composer or pianist, something like that. But anyways, pretty cool. It, that was a pretty unique thing for, you know, to happen in the early 70s, as far as I know. I wasn't alive, but yeah, it's cool stuff. Uh, next up, I bought this at a uh, uh, thrift store. So don't go fucking, don't go bashing on me for it. I, I just find shit like this interesting, and that's all there is about it. Um, the occult history of the Third Reich. No, I'm not a Nazi. Don't fucking, don't even fucking, don't even, don't even go there. Um, I will send you right back to whatever fucking uh, internet witch hunt is popular right now, where you fucking came from. Um, I just, occult shit I'm, I've always been interested in, and fuck, man. World War II, as much as, you know... As much as I would never want to be in a fucking war, I always find the history of wars fascinating. And you got to admit, there was tons of weird shit surrounding World War II. Um, one of the most weird um, wars in, ever. Um, weird shit. But anyways, I like reading about it. I like watching shit about it. Um, next, I have a, a pretty fucking good stack of like horror movies and shit. It's got some pretty cool... Some of this sh shit I've seen, and a lot of these I haven't. Um, this album, or this movie... I've wanted to own for a long time because I, I really dig it. It's fucking awesome. Um, it was one of the few David Cronenberg movies that I didn't have. That's uh, Videodrome, James Woods. Um, this album is fucking awesome. I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna go into detail about any of these. Um, I'm just showing them for whatever fucking reason. This movie, I picked up for like I don't know a dollar. I saw it when it came out. I think in the theaters, and it really didn't do anything for me. But maybe. Years later, on a rewatch, maybe it'll, it's at least worth a dollar, right? Uh, Aliens vs. Predator, Requiem, this is the un uh, unrated version. I can't remember if this is the first or second Alien vs. Predator movie. I think it's the second. Um, but yeah, uh, looking forward to rewatching that because, like I said, it did nothing for me um, when I saw it in the theater. Next up, I'd, I'd only seen the remake of this movie, never seen the original. That is My Bloody Valentine. Um, yeah classic horror movie. Uh, probably not going to be one of my favorites, but it's it's decent. I thought the, the remake was alright, actually. Um, whatever. Uh, this one, I would wanted to buy this since it came out, just because it looked cool to me. I do not watch a lot of anime. I've seen some. I uh, haven't seen a lot, but uh, the video game's cool, by the way, also. Afro Samurai. Um, yeah. What can I say about it? Um, what I know about it. It's it's uh, anime uh, based on... Well, I've only really played the video game, I guess. Uh, anyway, this dude, um, he's a ninja, or a whatever, martial artist, and he fights a bunch of uh, ninjas and samurais and shit. I'm sounding like a retard right now, trying to describe something I don't know much about. Like I said, I've only played the video game, but uh, Sam Jackson does a voice. Um, Ron Perlman does another voice in this. Um got like a hip-hop soundtrack like Wu-Tang Clan or something like that which I'm not a fan of rap but it actually does kind of work um, it, it works uh, very well actually for for, um, for that movie uh, like I like I said I don't like hip-hop or rap of really of any sort I'll be honest I'm not gonna go on a rant and bash it if you like it that's awesome different tastes but yeah I've never been a fan of rap I've never heard any rap that I like it's just, I'm not ever gonna go there so but 
it works. The soundtrack is kind of cool, actually, um, in the video game, and from what I understand, it's the same thing in the movie. Um, here's another movie that I grabbed for like a fucking, this might have been 50 cents or a dollar. I bought it at a, I, I can't remember, a pawn shop or something. I never, uh, I heard pretty, pretty, pretty weak reviews. I remember reading when it came out, um, but I thought the cover looked pretty cool, and I figured it's, it's worth a watch. Like I said, I got this for goddamn near free. Um, as above, so below. Cool cover, right? Cool artwork. Um, anyways, yeah, I, I... I did not read one positive review about this, and it's, I think it's found footage uh, style movie too, I think, which, that shit is so, that is beating a dead horse just into the ground, I mean, it, they need to stop that shit, um, some found footage movies were cool, you know, 15 years ago, and even some recently, I'll admit, but people need to stop that shit, man, it's just lazy, and it's, it's just, it's gotten really fucking old, I don't know how you guys feel, I think everyone... Just about everyone would agree with me on that, though. Stop it. Stop with the found footage shit. Here's an old, old horror movie with uh, with Peter Cushing. i have never seen this. Um, I, think I'd, I think I'd heard of it. But Peter Cushing's in it and a bunch of other older actors. Anyways, um, this is from, like, the fucking, I think, early 70s. Anyways, Asylum. Yeah, never... I've never seen it. I don't even know if I've heard of it, but... I, no, I picked that up cheap. I picked all these up cheap, all these movies. Um, here's one with, uh, uh, and what's his name? I think Peter Cushing's in this already, or also. Uh, yeah, Peter Cushing's in this. He's on the front, obviously, but I'm, I'm thinking of someone else. Um, anyway, The Beast Must Die. There you go. Um, another early 70s movie. I don't know if these movies are hammer horror movies, so let me know if they are. Yeah, let me know. I'm, no, I'm not an expert, really, to be honest, on really old horror movies. Um, I like horror, I mean, as you know. Um, that's almost all I watch. But, um, yeah, a lot of the early, like, uh, 70s and, and earlier stuff, I'm still kind of new to a lot of it. Um, this this is pretty cool. I haven't watched this, but it's a Roger Corman and a Francis Ford Coppola movie. Um, who was in this one? I want to say... Anyways, I don't know. I don't know who's in it, but I've heard of this one. I've never seen it, so now I can. Um, Dementia 13. Yeah, let, let me know. Talk about these movies if you want, because I haven't seen uh, almost any of those that I just talked about. Um, this show I've been really getting into as of late, so I picked this up. It was fairly cheap and a cool packaging. Uh, Stranger Things, I think it's the first season. It doesn't actually even say anywhere. pretty sure it's the first season, though. It comes in this cool, like... You know, the package is meant to look like a VHS movie, all wore out. It's supposed to look like that, obviously, um, in really good condition. It just has a retro thing going on. Um, pretty cool. You open it up, you know, it looks like a cassette tape. It's got this magnet that you... Or no, okay, you go like this. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a magnet right here you just kind of lift up. Open it up, and it's actually got... Uh, yeah, season one, it says right there, but it doesn't say anywhere else on the box. Um, two discs of regular DVD, one just fucking fell, whatever. And then it's got two discs of, um, it's got the Blu-ray version also, so you get two versions of the, uh, of the season. Cool show, man, I really dig it. I know everyone's gotten into it, but uh, I think it was really worth the hype. Comes with this poster that's pretty decent. Um... I watched like a few episodes and I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And I never watched it again until like the last month or so. And then I just, I, I really loved it. Yeah, it's a Stranger Things. It's a pretty cool poster. Um, I mean, I grew up in the, in the 80s, 80s and 90s. And this just reminds me of, you know, shit that I grew up watching. It's kind of like a, really reminds me of kind of like if you were to put like the Goonies and E.T. together. Um, that's kind of what it reminds me of in... I haven't seen many things that really nail that, uh, you know, that, that 80s vibe, and this, this one really does. Um, I like it. I don't know how you guys feel. Anyways, that's all the shit I got. It's almost 25 minutes, as you probably know. One of my longer videos, I usually keep them around, like, the 10 to 15 mark, sometimes less than 10 minutes. Uh, but, yeah, that's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Uh, I've gained kind of, like, a slew of subscribers uh, this in this last couple weeks, which is weird, because I hadn't 
even uploaded a video in almost two weeks. Um, and I just was getting these random subscribers. So uh, yeah, um, that's, that's cool. Um, yeah, thanks for stopping by. We will talk soon. Cheers.